My fiancé, Kiet, is from Thailand. A few years ago, K got in trouble at work and ended up needing to find another job. At that time, he was living in another province than where he is originally from. So when facing a quick end to the stable income, he had no nearby family to turn to and ended up crashing with a friend for a while, whilst figuring out what to do next. This friend was living with his girlfriend quite far out on the countryside of Udon Thani. Their home was a typical Thai two-story house with a big dining area, living room on the ground floor and a sleeping loft above. It was located at the end of a small dirt road with no other buildings or people living nearby. Upon first arriving to the house, Kay noticed various children's toys such as dolls, plastic cars, etc. spread out all around the house and property. He found this very strange as he was completely unaware of his friend having any children. So naturally, he asked him about this right away. Oh, so you have a child? His friend laughed and said, No, no, these are for my kumanto. For those of you who have never heard of a kumanto, from ancient times, the kumanto has been used in Thailand as a household divinity. It is common belief that keeping a kumanto in your house brings good luck and fortune. All you need to do is buy one and then keep it happy by offering it toys and sweet treats. For most people, to buy this would probably be to spend a small fortune. But it is very common in Thai culture to spend incredible amount of money on such things such as altars, amulets, tattoos of good fortune, even if you don't have any money. The Kumantong is the trapped spirit of an unborn child. This child, having died prematurely before its time, is unable to reincarnate. Therefore, monks or witch doctors practicing black magic are able to trap the spirit and use it for their own benefit. This originates from the practice of necromancy. The kumantong is created from a human fetus removed from the mother's womb before birth. In a horrifying ritual that includes roasting the fetus dry at a cemetery, ceremonial chanting and even to soak it in oil extracted from the skin of a dead child or a person who died in violent circumstances or an unnatural death. If you ask a Thai person, they would probably tell you that the kumantong was more likely made from the killing of the fetus, and sometimes even the mother, than from a stillborn. How anyone could live with this being a source to your own happiness or luck is beyond me. I find it sickening to imagine keeping a spirit of an innocent child trapped rather than supporting them to move on. Back to the story, K is religious and a very spiritual person but never really believed in these particular sort of legends or witchcraft. He dismissed the whole thing as quite bizarre and frankly thought his friend was a bit off for keeping toys in the house for this reason. The first evening he spent in the house, they were all enjoying barbecue with some beers. When they finally went to bed, K was sleeping on a mattress on the ground floor, while his friend and girlfriend had their bedroom upstairs. After a few hours of sleep, K suddenly woke up. He distinctly heard the sound of small, quick feet running up and down the stairs. K, being a big guy, bodybuilder and Muay Thai trainer, wasn't easily scared of many things, but this really made him freeze in bed, listening as the small steps kept running quickly in the stairs and across the floor above. Naturally, his thoughts went to the little altar with the kumantong, and he was really frightened. Eventually, he still managed to convince himself that it was only some sort of animal making the noise, and thus he was able to fall asleep again. The following morning, he mentioned the sounds to his friend, but the friend just shrugged it off. Yes, we have the kumantong. I already told you and it seemed that this didn't bother him in any way. He clearly had no problem with this, as he knew the kumantong was there to protect and bring luck to the household. He had willingly, knowingly invited it. K didn't understand how something so terrifying could be shrugged off so easily, but being in full daylight and knowing that he had been quite drunk the night before, he decided not to let it bother him. That same night, 
he went to bed without having any drinks before, but yet again woke up to the sound of footsteps. The steps were too quick and light to be from an adult, and Kay knew there was only him, his friend, and the girlfriend in the house. Furthermore, houses in cities in Thailand are usually always connected and built very closely, enabling sounds to travel between homes. But this house was completely freestanding with no chance of the sound coming from a neighbour. Kay even went around the house looking for tree branches and a light that could make the sounds, but found nothing. This continued every night and things seemingly started to escalate. Kay was terrified, but desperate situations call for desperate measures, and so he chooses to stay. He tried for many nights to shut out the sound of a child's running but could not ignore the toys that would be moved to different places in the morning. Sometimes, he even heard the toy cars outside being rolled across the yard. One night, he clearly heard the sound of a child's laughter coming from the very room he was sleeping in. <laughs> Terrified and unable to move, he stayed in bed all night waiting for the sun to rise. The sound of feet running and cheeky children's laughter kept on going all night. When the morning finally came, Kay packed up his belongings and left. There are many weird traditions in different cultures, but for me, this one isn't something that can be easily understood. I wonder if this child is really the child's spirit, or if someone else is captured during the ritual. If it is a child, then I really wish that someday these poor spirits are free. Even if they are cared for and prayed to as if they are something divine, this world should not be their place. <laughs>